Hi, and welcome to Talking Wildfire with Michael Hill. Today we're here talking to Conway Baum, and we're going to talk about something interesting and very personal to me and personal for a lot of other people out there. It's dealing with politics and how to navigate politics within inner team environments and also as a leader. Uh, Conway, can you tell us a little bit about uh, about politics, but we'll look at three different levels. We'll look at intra-team politics, inter-team politics, and also politics from the leadership perspectives. Can you, for our deeper dive today into skills that we use on the fire line, can you, we talk about politics? Yes, yeah, certainly. Uh, thanks again for having me again, Mike. Um, look, the lessons I learned about politics usually because I, I acted poorly in my own circumstances, and I learned the lessons the hard way. Uh, politics is part of being a human being. Uh, politics in a team uh, is all pervasive, and politics outside the team as well. And we're not just talking about national politics. We're talking about people and their own small empires and their input into a team um, and their identities as well. So you, you mentioned before intra-team politics. So that's the friction that people have between each other within a team. So intra-team politics is usually something to do with interpersonal frictions. So it could be between uh, two colleagues of equal status uh, working together in a team, or it could be between members of the team and the team leader. So intra-team politics is interpersonal frictions within the team. My uh, no stopping for teams technique, that followership technique, Part of that is understanding what you can do to help reduce those frictions. And number one is probably the breakdown in communication. Most problems between people usually occur because of a breakdown in communications. So if you can be as open and honest as you can about uh, communicating, or when you are unsure of a message, then clarify the message, that really helps. And I'll, if you permit me, I'll, I'll give you a story. I was a base manager for... Um, a helicopter operation and I had one particular pilot who was quite difficult to manage and uh, he and I ha had had a bit of an issue um, and we, we had to live in this hotel we're up in the middle of the Northern Territory so the only accommodation they had was this this was actually a motel and one night I was doing some work had something to do with um, rostering I get a knock on the door it's quite late and there at the door is this pilot and I thought, oh, what does he want now? You know, didn't we deal with this during the day? And I was just getting very frustrated with him. And he said, look, in the interests of CRM, I thought we had better sort this out. And those were his exact words, in the interests of CRM, crew resource management. And to me, that changed my whole opinion of him in an instant because he took the training from CRM, which also included understanding breakdowns in communication and knowing your place within a team. And he had taken that, deliberately taken that, explicitly taken that training and wanted to come and deal with the problem that we had in an open, honest and adult way. And so we did the, the usual, when you do this, I feel because sort of thing. And we sorted it out. Now, well, when I say we sorted it out, we came to a compromise. And I won't say that we sorted out the problem completely, but what we did do is we completely changed our attitudes towards each other. I thought he was a troublesome pilot who wasn't very good on the stick. I came away thinking, this guy needs a bit of extra training, but he's willing to learn, and I'm really happy that he does. And so my respect for him jumped immensely, and it's because of the CRM training. And so when you talk about politics and intra-team politics, human factors training, that CRM training, really does help. And a lot of it's to do with communication. Uh, the other one is stress. So if you want to make yourself a more valuable member of the team and an appreciated member of the team, if you can figure out what stressors your team members are undergoing and then do what you can to relieve those stressors, they will be incredibly grateful. And so if you have a, an ally in your team that reduces that inter intrapersonal sorry, interpersonal, intra-team friction. Um, understanding your job and doing your job to the best of your ability is another thing that you can do as well. Uh, another aspect about uh, interpersonal uh, friction and intra-team uh, politics is the idea of territory. 
So uh, when we look at the reasons for aggression in people, there can be anything from, say, uh, maternal aggression. It could be uh, irritable aggression. Um, it could be just natural aggression. But a big one is territorial aggression. People don't like it when you muscle in on their territory. And that can be psychological as well as physical. So psychological could be when you have a particular role within a team. Maybe you are the team leader or you're the second in charge or you have a speciality and someone else tries to come in and usurp your position there or take your position and you can become quite uh, uncomfortable, anxious or even aggressive about that and that can lead to interpersonal friction as well. So the delineation of roles is, is important. If you're a team leader, making sure people understand what their roles are and try and stay in your own lane. And if you start moving out of your lane into someone else's lane, be aware that they can actually increase the level of animosity and angst and anxiety within the team. So try and stick to your lane. If you do see a problem in someone else's, offer to help them in a non-threatening, helpful way, or maybe discuss the roles at the next team meeting or with the team leader, or find some way to, to address the problem, but without demeaning the other person. Maybe they're not very competent at their job. Maybe they need more training. You have to figure out a way to address that without demeaning the person, and that will help. Uh, another aspect of uh, politics is actually the personality driven. So uh, in one of the, the previous interviews, we talked about personality types. So you have submissive, supportive, assertive, and aggressive. Sometimes you can get a personality that comes in that's uh, verges from being assertive to aggressive. And what you end up having is a, a dominance um, challenge. Uh, and there can be a natural hierarchy with any, or within any organization, but especially in those male-dominated organizations, usually the high-risk um, dynamic uh, pursuits such as firefighting, etc., are dominated predominantly by males because of the stamina required. And so when you have a lot of males together, you're going to get an, an interesting dynamic and you're going to have what's called inter-male uh, aggression. And so if you look at it from the animal kingdom, you can see uh, the um, mountain goats headbutting each other. And you can see male animals trying to dominate each other. It's natural part of the male makeup. Uh, and it's part of our, our growth when you're a male. Think of it when you were in your late teens and early 20s, how you were willing to fight anyone who seemed to have committed a slight against you. It's a natural part of the progression of the, the male, um, male life span. And so you can get people with a naturally aggressive or assertive personality coming into a team environment, and then they will want things done their way. And so they will try and change the dynamic within the team to suit themselves. And submissive people will conform. Supportive people will try and make things better. Assertive people will try and adjust. Uh, and other aggressive people will try to uh, engage in conflict. And so that can actually be the source of a lot of problems within a team. It's personality driven. And that's that territorial aggression. Is there anything you'd recommend in that type of situation? Oh, how do you address that? It's really difficult because unless the team leader sees it as being a problem and sees the personality type as being a problem, there's not really much you can do short of basically coming to blows with the person or freezing them out, which is what you don't want to occur with a team that's so reliant on trust between team members. So a good team leader can actually identify those personalities that can be disruptive within a team and must be able to address it. And that might come from counselling. Uh, it might come from some sort of uh, team building exercise where you can actually lay out the the pros and cons of each member of the team and understand your role. Um, but if counselling doesn't work, then you may actually have to remove that person because they are too disruptive for that team. So the, for the benefit of the team, the person has to be removed. That might be the, the only avenue uh, of pursuit. But um, the team leader needs to be able to identify that, and that's very important. That's excellent, Conway. And can you move on to inner team politics? Okay, inter team politics. So um, people identify with their in group. So um, one of the things that we have is we have icons uh, like the, the Stars and Stripes, 
Americans are very proud of the Stars and Stripes. So they identify the Stars and Stripes as part of their culture. And the same thing can happen at an organizational level as well. Uh, a smoke jumper is very, very proud of being a smoke jumper. And so they've got their own symbology and icons. But part of that pride is also the group that you're in. So you may be a smoke jumper, and there's smoke jumpers all throughout the United States, but your particular team, you know, Yellowstone or, or Boise or Missoula or wherever it may be, you have an identity with that particular team and you become very protective of it. And whether or not it's overt, whether it's explicit or implicit, sometimes your actions may be inappropriate because you find that you are defending or protecting or or trying to push your team as being better than other teams and all you end up doing is causing frictions. So in that sort of circumstance, you should be looking at the big picture. It should be a team of teams. So the smoke jumpers are a team and the individual teams are the individual bases. Um, don't consider yourself to be better than anyone else. You're not better, you're not worse, you're just different. But you should all be striving for the same thing, and that's to protect um, the uh, what, uh, the um, the uh, forests, uh, protect life, protect wildlife, and also to protect your own job and your own existence. Um, there's plenty of organisations that have become so dysfunctional that they actually had to be taken apart and moved away or or disassembled because of that dysfunction. So a highly functioning team becomes a um, an exemplar for the rest of the organization and that's what you should be striving for but also helping other teams as well if you become one of those teams that helps other teams the respect within the organization for your team just gets increased markedly um there's as you get older you seem to you you realize that a lot of the politics are just not that important what is important is being able to do the job and doing the job safely. And so that's what you should be striving for and, and the longevity of the organization, not just your team within the organization. And Conway, can you address for us leadership in politics from the uh, perspective of a leader? Yes, yes. Well, as we talked about before, having a disruptive person coming into a team, the leader needs to be able to identify it. Uh, one of the problems, and it's a human trait, is that uh, you want to protect your territory. And so quite often, sometimes the leaders, depending on their personality type, will see that they are entitled to their position as a leader and must do everything in their power to protect that position. They want to protect their empire. And sometimes that can lead to uh, negative, um, negative actions such as denigrating other people, demeaning other people, or sabotaging other people just to make yourself look better. The What I found in the leaders that have been inspirational to me, they're the ones that have actually helped other organizations. And I'll, and I'll give you an example. One of the best leaders that I've worked for, um, a guy by the name of Tony Fraser, he was the commander of all army aviation within Australia. And there was an incident at a, a, a race, sort of like your NASCAR, American NASCAR. Um, it was an incident where a defense helicopter was hovering close to uh, the crowd and they kicked up a lot of, of the hoarding and the signage, etc., which then went flying through the crowd and caused some injuries. And because it was a helicopter, um, people automatically thought it was an army helicopter. And so a lot of the negative press was directed at the army. And I was in his office one day and I said, sir, how come you don't make the correction that it wasn't an army helicopter, it was actually a Navy helicopter because it's making army look bad. And his response was, we're all one defense force and I've got big shoulders, so I'm happy to take the hit. That was just one example of the quality of the leader that he was. So he wasn't concerned about the politics between army and Navy the reputation of army because he knew that would blow over if the press will find something else to worry about so he was thinking of the long game it was all about the defense force as a whole army navy and air force working together he didn't mind taking the blame for something that wasn't army's fault because that would protect the navy and then he knew that it would blow over anyway and that's the key of a good leader think the long game have big shoulders take the hit and know when there is a problem with your organization, how are you going to deal with it? Um, protecting your empire just makes you look petty. Uh, unfortunately, the way things are in, in 
in the real world is sometimes those people that do protect their empires end up getting promoted and getting advanced. So there's not really much you can do about it um, except for just understand what's important to you. Is your role within the organization important or is it that person, that individual, and them being advanced when they shouldn't be, is that more important? And I would suggest it just requires just a bit of a a change in the way of looking. It's what's called aspect, an aspect change. Figure out what's more important to you and don't waste time on things that really aren't that important. The obvious caveat to that is unless it has something to do with safety or and the longevity of your team, then you need to take action. But otherwise, just like water for ducks back, just let it flow and just stick with what's important to you. And Conway, the fourth side of politics, to talk about politics in an organization or within a country, about the cycles. Could you speak just oh, yes. a time bit about that with us? <laughs> oh, yeah. Everything goes in cycles. You know, uh, history, as they say, history repeats. Well, uh, uh, but maybe it doesn't repeat, but it certainly rhymes. Um, and it goes up and down. And it's throughout history. So we look at, the say, the Roman Empire. They had a longevity of about six or seven centuries. But what saw their hegemony um, disappear? It was the, the changes to their internal society. It was some natural disasters. And then it was an external threat by the, the Goths and the Visigoths that came down through the empire. And the Roman Empire, which was absolutely remarkable, became destroyed in less than 100 years. And we're seeing that going in cycles as well. The British used to dominate the world uh, for a couple of centuries, and then, then the uh, emergence of America as the superpower, then the Soviet Union, which came and went. Now we're seeing China. Everything goes in cycles, and it's the same with all sorts of politics. So the problems that we're seeing now in national politics are the same problems we had 50 years ago, 100 years ago, 200 years ago, but we seem to forget those sort of lessons. And it comes. it's the same in an organization as well. You're going to have peaks and troughs ebbs and flows as people come into and out of the organization you just have to have a view of the long game and this be ready to ride it out and do what you can in your little area of responsibility to make things better for you um, being in the military i went through many many commanding officers some i would follow through fire and others i wouldn't even follow into a bar but uh, you just have to wait it out um, and do what you can to make your situation and that for your the people who are important to you make their situations better. Conway, that's great. Thank you for spending your time with us today and sharing your thoughts and your hard-won knowledge on politics. We really appreciate it. If someone wanted to make contact with you, what would be the best way and or would you be open to do training courses for other agencies or countries or anybody or individuals would you be interested in it oh 100 percent uh, especially i uh, love going to other cultures and uh, and trying to work with them and organizations that have specific problems i like to deal with them and come up with a solution to their specific problem and a lot of it is uh, can be addressed within the human factors and crew resource management training most of the problems that human beings have are addressed within CRM. Uh, I'll put up on the screen now my website, uh, ipas.com.au, and every, all my contact details are there. Okay, so on the website there, on my website, which you can see on the screen, uh, are all my contact details and also the details of the different courses I provide. And I can tailor make a course for you that specifically addresses the problems that you have within your organization. Happy to help. That's great. Thank you very much, Conway. And again, we really appreciate your time. No worries. Thanks for having me, mate. We're doing this for all of you. If you like what we're doing, please give us a thumbs up, hit the subscribe button, and leave a comment below. See you next time.